Our lead does come from the gridiron, not the NFL, the college variety. And one of the biggest names in all of collegiate football, one of the all-time greats, Nick Saban. Marginal NFL coach, but the gold standard when it comes to college football. So Alabama's Nick Saban continues to huff and puff, very annoyed that players now are getting paid. Unlike the name, image, and likeness deals, which are all in vogue in college football, continue to pile up a bunch of gold bullion in the bank accounts of top recruits at schools like Alabama, Ohio State, USC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So Nick Saban has come up with a solution. You have a problem, you got to come up with a solution. So if you didn't see this, didn't hear about it, maybe not, Uh, Nick Saban has proposed a rather radical idea that he believes his school in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, should guarantee a set amount, a flat amount of money, NIL money, for every player on the team. Everyone gets the same check. Whether you're the starting quarterback, the backup defensive back, you all get the same check. And Saban explained his rationale, and he said that we give everybody the same medical care, academic support, food service, same scholarship. Saban grunting in a recent interview with the AP, which was just published. Now, the quote continues. Saban went on to say, uh, if we're going to do this, then everybody is going to benefit equally. He proudly pumped his chest out. I'm not going to create a caste system on our team. But wait, there's more. He said, I don't think, Saban said, what we're doing right now is a sustainable model. Adding that uh, schools can basically buy players in recruiting these days. He said, I mean, if that's what we want college football to be, I don't know. Okay, then, the Grim Reaper, Nick Saban. So let us discuss the question. Nick Saban, Alabama head coach, proposing at his school, and we assume he wants this everywhere, Nick Saban proposing an equal pay model for NIL deals in college football. Is this shrewd or rude? Okay, so it's rude and it is rotten is what it is. Rude and rotten, both those things. I've got deli counter barometer, and Russian revolution. And we will connect all of these things together, and that will be the layer of frosting on the wonderful cake. The most important part of the cake is the frosting. If you have good frosting, you can overlook average cake. So first of all, Nick Saban bickering here is telling. Because Saban is admitting that he's nervous, biting his fingernails a little bit, tapping his toes. Because even though Alabama has been right in the middle of the NIL game, this is still uncharted territory. And Nick Saban is announcing to the world with the megaphone that he is concerned that his control of the Tuscaloosa Empire is in danger, that it could be ruination for Roll Tide. It's a nuisance. Nick Saban, what he ought to do is go down to the the deli counter and take a number. He can wait his turn in line with the other bickering coaches, the other grumpy coaches complaining, whining. Lane Kiffin has been complaining about this. Dabo Sweeney has been worse than anybody. And there's several other high-profile coaches that have been acting like petulant children being forced to eat broccoli Because of the NIL deals. It's unreasonable anger, especially at schools that can more than afford to compete with anyone paying for the top players in college football. Now, second, is it true what Nick Saban is proposing would actually be a violation of United States law? I'm nodding my head. Yes, Uh, Saban, who fancies himself a very bright man, is encouraging desperado actions. As we understand it, 
the Supreme Court already decided that what Saban is proposing would be foul play. Right? The judges upheld, this is, what, a year ago? The, the judges upheld a lower court's ruling, and that ruling said that the NCAA could not cap athletes' benefits without violating the antitrust laws in America. Now, does that apply for Alabama? Why wouldn't it? But Saban, what he's proposing is exactly that. You know, hey, listen, I think we should just have a solid salary cap, and we're going to put our own cap in there. Everyone gets the same. Knock me down with a feather. The bluster is unnecessary. The industrial complex of big-time, massive college football, the Power Five conference, those big-time schools have been playing pay- players, young and old, since Hector was a pup. And, and as for these NIL deals of today and the new wave, the, the people that are most upset, it's just Twitter outrage, the Twitter outrage machine, which is a terrible barometer of real life. It's not real. We've been through this a bunch of times. A uh, very small percentage of people contribute content on that. It's the public square but it's the public square with like two people yelling back at each other and a whole lot of bots. And you don't know, and I don't know. There's such a high level of toxicity. You don't know whether you're talking to a bot or a, a loser. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's a mix. And there are some real people that are around there. But these, these people spend their lives trying to find something to have a coronary over. And guess what? The bottom line on this, that no matter how silly some people think the NIL payments appear, the rank and file did not stop watching college football. College football did not see a stoppage in television ratings. People still watch as a regional sport. That's what college football is. It's a regional sport. The sport has continued to flourish. All right, final thought. So why, why is Nick Saban proposing a plan that would make college football a totalitarian state. Because that's what that is, right? Am I wrong? When I was in school, that's what they they say. Everyone gets the same money. That's communism. That's a totalitarian totalitarian state. Uh, I would say because of a brain fog. And this concept, I believe, has been tried in different countries over the years. In real life, And it has been a spectacular failure for the general population. Why would it be any different for a college football team? Uh, If you study up on the Russian Revolution, uh, they planned the the Russian Institute of Equal Wages for everyone to get paid the same amount of money. And the Foreign Affairs Office paid 500 rubles to every employee. That was the plan. And it, it was abandoned, though, shortly after... It was proposed and started. Now, why is that? Because of corruption. And the same thing would happen in Alabama. If you pay every Alabama player the same, what's going to inevitably happen is the quarterback, the star receiver, the star running back is going to get a little taste under the table. right? And the reality is every job does not need to get the same money. It shouldn't. Now, here's how I relate this. I work in radio. I do the overnight show. We have tons of affiliates. We're very lucky to be on here on a lot of stations. We would not be on during the day. But I make peanuts compared to like Colin Cowherd, for example. But that's I'm okay with that. That's the way it is, right? The, the daytime people in this business get paid a lot more than the nighttime people. And I, I'm not, I should be making the same money. No, it's a different day part. It's a different different animal. And there are strengths and there are weaknesses to what I do. And there are strengths and weaknesses to what Cowherd does. But truth be told, as far as Nick Saban, I'm going with Saban just being old-fashioned here. That he liked the simpler times, the way it was. The way it was. Those wads of cash-filled manila envelopes, car keys waiting at the front desk of the hotel for the Escalade, of course, the hotel room and the girlfriend's name, so nobody knows. No blood relation under a pseudonym. Back alley deals, all that. That's music to Nick Saban's ears. When it comes to the authoritarian model that Saban would like to see hanging out there at Alabama, uh, I'm relatively confident, like, I don't know, 100% that Nick Saban is of the position 
rules for thee, but not for me. And now what does that mean? He, I, I want to bet if you said to Nick Saban, okay, we're gonna, I'll make a deal with you, Nick. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, all the players, all of the players are going to make the same money, but the coaches also. You're all going to make a flat rate that the coach of Alabama is going to make the same amount of money as the coach at Arizona State or UNLV or UMass or you name it, Minnesota. You're all going to make the same money. So I'm relatively confident that if that was the case, Nick Saban would have a problem with that. And he'd be, no, no, no. It's not one size fits all for him, but for the players, that's the way it's got to be. I mean, come on now. What are, we, what are we doing? What are we doing here? 